Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the formula mass and molar mass of compounds. So shown in this photograph here are a few glucose tablets. And remember when we, re when we were studying the atomic mass and the molar mass of elements, we were able to take a sample of an element and uh, just by weighing it we could figure out how many atoms are in that sample. Well using formula mass and molar mass for compounds we can actually do the same thing uh, with a with a compound just like these glucose tablets here we can actually weigh these glucose tablets and then using a couple of handy dandy calculations we can figure out how many molecules of glucose are in a given sample of glucose or any compound for that matter so uh, the formula mass of a compound is uh, very much analogous to the atomic mass of an element the formula mass is actually the average mass of a molecule in the case of molecular compounds or formula unit in the case of ionic compounds and the unit for formula mass is the atomic mass unit, or AMU. And you might be familiar with the AMU. The AMU is the same unit that we use to express the atomic mass of elements. And remember, the AMU is defined as one twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. So that's very important. And a couple of synonyms for formula mass are molecular mass and molecular weight. So anytime you throw around either of these terms, molecular mass, molecular weight, or formula mass, you're always talking about the same thing, no matter which term you use. And to get the formula mass, to calculate the formula mass of any compound, what you're going to do is the following. You're going to take the number of atoms in the first element of your chemical formula, and you're going to multiply it by the atomic mass of your first element. And then you're going to take that product, and you're going to add that to the product of the number of atoms in the second element of your chemical formula times the atomic mass of your second element. And then you're going to keep going until you run out of elements in your chemical formula. So with that in mind, uh, let's do an example where we calculate the formula mass of a compound. So this says to calculate the formula mass of formaldehyde, which has the formula CH2O. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the atomic mass of our first element, which is carbon, and the atomic mass of carbon is 12.0107 AMU. And we're going to multiply it by the number of atoms in the in the uh, in the number of carbon atoms. So that's just one. So we can just leave that alone. And then we're going to add that to the uh, atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1.00794 AMU. So 1.00794 AMU. And we're going to multiply that by two, the number of hydrogen atoms in formaldehyde. And then finally, we're going to add the molar mass, excuse me, the atomic mass of oxygen, which is 15.9994 AMU. So 15.9994 AMU times the number of oxygen atoms, which again is one, so we can just leave that alone. And if you carry this calculation out yourself, which I highly encourage, then the answer you're going to arrive at is 30.0260 AMU. So this is the uh, formula mass of formaldehyde and this is how you would go about calculating the formula mass of any compound. So uh, with that in mind, I'd like to talk about the molar mass of a compound. And the molar mass of a compound is the mass, which is usually given in grams, of one mole of a compound. So if you're unfamiliar with the mole, it might be a good time to brush up on the mole concept, which I do have a video for. I'll, uh, I'll provide a link for it down there in the uh, description box. But again, so yeah, the formula mass is the mass of one mole of a compound. And remember that uh, one mole of anything is Avogadro's number of that thing. Avogadro's number being 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So if I have a mole of toothpicks, that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd toothpicks. Any mole of anything is always going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. So for instance, if I have a mole of formaldehyde, as I saw earlier, that's going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formaldehyde molecules. And the, uh, the beautiful thing, the nice thing about the molar mass is that it's actually numerically equivalent to the corresponding compounds formula mass in AMU. So 
uh, for instance, we saw earlier that the uh, the formula mass of formaldehyde was 30.0260 AMU. Uh, that means that the uh, average formaldehyde molecule has a mass of 30.0260 AMU. And that also means that the molar mass of formaldehyde, so the mass of one mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, of formaldehyde molecules is 30.0260 grams. So we say that the molar mass of formaldehyde is 30.0260 grams per mole. So with the molar mass and the uh, formula mass, we can actually, we're in a position now where we can count molecules by weighing a sample of a compound. So we can start with the mass and we can get all the way to the number of molecules in that sample. So we're not really going to do it directly because uh, we need a couple of steps along the way. Uh, we're going to do it in a two-step process. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the mass of the compound, and we're going to convert that to the number of moles of the compound. We're going to accomplish that by using the molar mass of the compound. And then once we have the, moles, uh, the amount of the compound in moles, we can actually convert that to the number of molecules or formula units in the case of ionic compounds uh, using Avogadro's number. So let's go through an example where we do this whole thing. So the example says to calculate the number of sodium chloride formula units in a 1.254 kilogram sample of sodium chloride. Remember, sodium chloride is an ionic compound, so it doesn't necessarily form molecules per se, so the correct terminology is formula units, so that's why I've, inclu I've included that in the example. Uh, so again, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our given information, which is our 1.254 kilograms, so it's 1.254 kilograms of NaCl, whoops, 1.254 kilograms of NaCl, and the molar mass, like I said, it's usually given in grams per mole, so we got to take that kilograms and we got to convert it to grams, so one kilogram of NaCl, kilo is the, uh, is the prefix that corresponds to 10 to the third, so that means that one kilogram of NaCl is going to be 10 to the third or 1,000 grams of NaCl. So now that we have grams of NaCl, we can uh, use the molar mass of NaCl, which is again, again is going to be given in grams per mole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put grams of NaCl on the bottom. and I'm going to put one mole of NaCl on top. So now what we have to do is we actually have to calculate the molar mass of NaCl. So what you're going to do is you're going to refer to your periodic table and you're going to see those atomic masses of NaCl, or of, of sodium and chlorine rather, and those atomic masses are going to be equivalent to the, to the corresponding elements molar masses in grams per mole, so we're simply going to add those together. Okay, so the molar mass of sodium is, I got it right here, the molar mass of sodium is 22.989770, and this is grams per mole, and we're going to add that to the molar mass of chlorine, which is 35.453. Grams per mole. And once we add those together, we're going to carry it out to three decimal places, which is the fewest. And that's going to give us 58.443 grams per mole. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that 58.443 grams per mole in right here. So instead of writing it a second time, I'm just going to draw that little arrow there so we know what we're talking about here. So now we have converted to moles of sodium chloride, but we're not quite finished yet. We have to take that moles uh, and we have to convert it to formula units, and we do so again using Avogadro's number. So I'm going to put my one mole of NaCl on the bottom. And I'm going to put my Avogadro's number on top, which is that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of sodium chloride. So um, 
it's going to be, I'll just put it in up here, formula units, which I'll just abbreviate FU of NACL. Whoops. Let me try that again. Have to write really small. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and make sure all of our units cancel. So we have kilograms canceling with kilograms. We have grams canceling with grams. Moles canceling with moles. And we're left with nothing but formula units of sodium chloride. And that's going to give us our final answer is going to be, again, I encourage you to do these calculations on your own. So uh, please pause the video and do it yourself before you look at the, uh, before you look any further. And your final answer is going to be 1.292 times 10 to the 25th formula units of sodium chloride. So there you had it. It's very, very similar to uh, calculating the, uh, the amount of atoms uh, of a sample of a given element, uh, all you have to do is, the, the only extra step you would have to do is just add together the, uh, the molar masses of your individual elements that compose your compound. So, all right, I hope this video helped you out a little bit, and um, take it easy.